You ready? <laughs> Hi. Hi. So I'm doing a uh, transition. We call this a template in the skateboarding world for a uh, four foot quarter pipe. We're actually gonna use it for a, a box jump lip. So same, same thing uh, you do for a four foot mini ramp or a quarter pipe. And so I'm gonna teach you how to do that. All right, the number one step is get two sheets of plywood lined up alongside each other to make an eight foot square. So a normal sheet of plywood is four foot by eight foot. We're gonna put them together this way so it makes eight foot by eight foot. We're gonna get the corners lined up. Uh, we're out here in Zambia, so the, the plywood's not perfectly square. You can see there's a gap in the middle. Um, not, not perfectly square plywood, but usually the plywood makes it perfectly square four by eight. We're just gonna work with what we have. The next key is we're gonna we're gonna determine which side is gonna be the bottom of our template. So I'm, I'm picking this edge. This is the bottom of the template. So if you're a if you were to imagine this being the side of your ramp, this would be what I call the bottom, the bottom edge. So if I'm gonna cut it up like this, a quarter pipe like that, we're calling this edge that sits on the ground the bottom. So for my little layout here, I'm calling this the bottom edge, and that's your first point. So then you take your, your piece that you're gonna use, and you just line up this bottom edge with the bottom edge on the piece you're gonna cut. So for right now, it doesn't matter that this is not lined up. What matters is that the bottom edge is lined up on the bottom. And you measure eight feet. You don't even have to measure because it's actually eight feet. We're doing an eight foot radius, so what that means, the radius is gonna be an eight foot radius. And I've already kind of reset this. I set a screw in here. Now every tape, every tape measurer should have a slot in here and that's made for your pivot point. So you put that, put the slot on here and since we're doing an 8 foot radius, it's 8 foot from here to the bottom. The important part is when you come down, since we're doing an 8 foot radius, you see it's 8 foot right on the bottom. So you lock out your tape measurer. And then what you do is this pivots the tape measure if it stays on your screw, you'll be able to go and get your radius. But for the first step, what I do to start is I start, I make a mark right here, and then I see how much length I have in the top because this matters. Um, for what we're doing, it doesn't really. It doesn't matter if it's six inches or if it's one foot, but since we're trying to get two templates out of one piece of wood, I want to see how long this is to make sure I can get that same length out of this end for its, for its partner. So I'm going to do a temporary mark. And a normal, uh, a normal piece of two by four is only an inch and a half tall. So I'm going to come up to my inch and a half mark, which is right here. And I'm just going to do this. And I'm not going to mark the end here, this sharp point. I'm just going to cut my template here so I can get more wood out of this. So what that does is it leaves, it leaves me a straight edge here for the copy that I'm going to get out of this for the opposite uh, made of this template. The way this laid out, it gave us 11 inches here of straight. So I want to make sure because I'm trying to get two pieces out of this that we have 11 inches here. And as you see, we have plenty of room for our template to get two pieces out of this. It doesn't matter if this is 11 inches, if it's 9 inches. Um, the way it plays out for a 4 foot radius at 8, uh, 8 foot, or sorry, 4 foot quarter pipe at 8 foot radius, you can only do about 12 inches maximum on the top. So, but it doesn't really matter where that is, it just depends on where you want that, how much deck space you want on your template. But since I know this is going to work for us, I'm just going to go through here, start over again, get that linked, linked up right there. We're going to lock this out at 8 foot. And I'm holding my finger here so that this doesn't slide back. Even though it's locked, sometimes it slides and kind of lean the pencil in. Holding that, just going, going nice and slow, making sure that my tape measure doesn't come off the screw. Making sure my tape measure is not slipping on me. You also want to make sure your pencil is not doing this because your line will go up and down and your quarter pipe will come out all wonky. Following through. All the way up to the edge. 
when you're cutting this, a lot of people use jigsaws. And it's just not the right way. You always want to use a circular saw or a skill saw, what they're called. And the way to do this properly is you, you pull your blade out, you set it against the wood, and you set your depth to be just the depth of the wood. So you see how you can change the height on that? You go right to the depth of the wood and just go just past just a little bit. So I'm just kind of pushing that up a little bit and then pushing past. Now when you cut, you'll be able to turn because your depth isn't very deep. If your depth, depth is really deep, it's gonna be bending on that blade and you're not gonna be able to go anywhere. But if the depth's like this, you can actually cut and you're gonna get a smoother cut than you would with a jigsaw. So, uh, normally we have a generator or electricity to plug in. We didn't have the option. We have a generator over there, but can't get in it. So we're in the neighborhood. We uh, are borrowing some electricity from some friends over here, just making it happen. So, we also don't have a sawhorse. Gonna cut this right here on this uh, natural sawhorse we have right here. Mm -hmm. So, on my first one, I usually do a T just so I remember which ones that uh, got the best thing. cut on it for my copy. So, T for template. And then, with my leftover, I just line this up, keep the edges straight. <laughs> Make sure we're straight on all sides, and then just trace it. So as you can see, we didn't cut this all the way down here, so we have that extra room so we can get as much deck space out of that as possible. And thank you to my friend Reynolds for letting us use his electricity. And his son, what's your son's name again? Peter. Peter. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm marking my layout. We're doing, on this ramp, we're doing every eight inches. We're doing a rib. And with the eight foot uh, radius and a four foot tall ramp, it actually works out to have two full sheets run all the way down, so eight feet of plywood run down. So the way that works out is if we start right from the top corner, go right on this top corner and then work ourselves and mark every eight inches. So you just mark it, eight, 16, 24. This is very helpful to have someone extra help and hold this. 32, 40, and you just go every eight inches down. 48, 56, 64. Right there on that. Okay, I'm gonna grab my square. Then while we got all these matched up, since we're doing four of these, you take your speed square, go across and copy the line all the way down. Now what this does, when you put your first sheet of plywood on, since it's four feet from here to the, to the four foot mark, every eight inches end, ends up on four, you put a full sheet of plywood on, it lands right halfway on your seam. So these are all the marks for your ribs. And if you wanna get fancy with it, for your screws, you can hold your speed square here and come up three inches and you have a mark. And you can do screw marks, that way it's all pretty, you can measure for your screws if you want to. I, you don't have to do that though. What are you doing on here, Dustin? Yeah, we're, we're setting the screws, getting it ready. Putting it together, box jump. 4K. 4K? <laughs> Putting this together so we can share the gospel with the crew later tonight. Let's go. Almost done, putting the box jump together out here in Zambia, Livingston. Oh, yeah.